dogs first evolved around 12,000 years ago. They're one of only about a dozen animals that's ever shared a close relationship with humans. Today, they vary dramatically in size, shape, color, and behavior. At one end of the scale, the Chihuahua weighs in at under a kilogram, compared to the Neapolitan Mastiff, which weighs a massive 70 kilograms. No other species shows such a range of individual characteristics. But regardless of their size, the gestation period for dogs is the same, about 63 days. We'll follow a golden retriever from conception right through to birth. And for the first time, we'll be able to watch the fetuses as they develop within the mother's uterus. The female retriever usually releases 10 to 12 eggs. She's now ready to mate. The dog's penis contains a bone that may provide additional stabilization during copulation probably because the male needs rigidity to enter the female nearly vertically from below. He mounts her. Within seconds, he ejaculates. The two animals now enter the tie stage. The male's penis locks inside the vagina. During this time, more fluid from the prostate gland is released to help transport the sperm. The tie can last from five minutes to an hour. They normally turn to stand back to back for this process. This seemingly bizarre behavior has its roots in the dog's evolutionary past. Its wild ancestors would adopt this position to protect themselves from attack. Our golden retriever's eggs are now fertilized and traveling towards the uterus. Over the course of just 63 days, each of these bundles of cells will become a puppy in a litter of nine. It's just over two weeks since our golden retriever conceived, and she's already a quarter of the way through her pregnancy. Inside her uterus, an amazing process is underway. The embryonic ball of cells turn in on themselves in a process called gastrulation. As the cells continue to divide and multiply, they need instructions, a trigger to tell them what type of cells they should become and whereabouts in the embryo they should go. Gastrulation is one of the greatest wonders of nature. First, the embryo folds in on itself to form a cylindrical tube. As it does so, it forms a patch of tissue. This is known as the primitive streak. On one edge of this primitive streak, another much smaller patch of tissue forms. Biologists call it the organizer. Every cell in the developing embryo then flows over the organizer. As they do, they receive instructions that assign them their fate. Some are told to become head cells, some tail cells. Others are instructed to form nerve cells, and some become skin. Now the nine embryos attach to the uterine wall. As they do, the uterus contracts to push them along, so they're all evenly spaced. It's three weeks since conception. The embryos are about the size of a pea. Our dog is now showing outward signs of her pregnancy. But even dogs who are not pregnant can sometimes exhibit such signs. This odd behavior 
sometimes referred to as pseudo or phantom pregnancy, goes back to the dog's distant past. For these embryos, along with every dog on the planet, all descend from the grey wolf. In the wild, only the dominant pair in a pack ever breeds, ensuring that the strongest bloodline thrives. But the dominant bitch is not only the mother for the pack, she's the primary hunter too. If she had to stop hunting while rearing her own puppies, the pack would lose her predation skills. To avoid this, every female comes into season together. The unmated bitches go through a false pregnancy. When the dominant female's pups are born, the other females can suckle and raise them, allowing the leader to go straight back to hunting. The legacy of this behavior can still be seen in the domestic dog. During a phantom pregnancy, she may start nursing toys, carrying them to her bed area. In some cases, she will make a nest, convinced she's about to give birth. The dog embryo has reached the halfway point. The heart starts to beat. Now the embryos are about the size of a grape. So far, they've developed at roughly the same pace as humans. Now, however, it is time for the dog to speed up. Unlike human embryos, which stay in the womb for another eight months, these puppies must be ready for birth in a mere 30 days. The structure of the basic eyeball is now being formed. Recent research has revealed that a dog's vision is similar to that of a colorblind human. Dog embryos develop only two sets of color receptors in the retina compared to our three. They can't differentiate between red, yellow, and green. This is how the embryonic pup's developing eyes will eventually work. The lack of full color vision is probably a result of evolutionary pressures over tens of millions of years. When mammals first evolved, towards the end of the dinosaur age, they found it easier to compete with other species as nocturnal creatures. So the early mammals needed good night vision. That came at the expense of full color vision. Day 33, the legs are beginning to form. At this stage, the paws are paddle-shaped and webbed with ridges. A set of pimple-like projections are growing around the mouth. Here, whiskers will sprout. And for the first time on television, we can see the growing puppies using a form of ultrasound called 4D. Dr. Thomas Hildebrandt is a specialist in veterinary ultrasonography. He's one of the few people in the world who can capture 4D images of animals in the womb. Unlike traditional ultrasound, 4D imagery not only creates a three-dimensional image, it also captures the image in real time, creating what's called a four-dimensional picture. These images reveal that at this stage, the pups are now moving. Their major muscles are well advanced. These survivor muscles, such as those in the legs and jaw, are developing most rapidly. They are vital for the animal's survival once it leaves the uterus, and this early movement is a form of exercise. The ears are clearly visible. The inner ear has formed. The middle and external ear are still growing. A marvel of evolutionary design, the
the dog ear is extremely sophisticated. When pricked, its flap reflects sound back into the ear canal, like we do when we cup our ear with our hand. Right now, the canal is plugged, but when this retriever is an adult, it'll be able to hear sounds four octaves higher than the highest note on a piano, and four times further away than anything we can hear. The eyes are now closed and the lids have fused. Although the placenta filters out most waste matter, the kidneys of the retriever fetus are now functioning. These produce a primitive form of fluid which contaminates the fetal environment. So when the lower and upper lids start to touch, the cells grow together, sealing the aperture. The fetus now looks at least a little like a dog, but our nine puppies still have a way to go. Before birth, they must grow claws, develop an astonishingly advanced sense of smell, and grow hair, all in a period of just under three weeks. But 40 days in, these pups take an important step in their development. These 4D images show the puppy opening its mouth and displaying its tongue as if panting. What we're witnessing for the very first time is an in-womb rehearsal of behavior that will be essential later in life. A dog has very few sweat glands. So as soon as it overheats, it opens its mouth, lets its tongue flop out, and begins to pant. While doing so, it moistens the tongue, speeding up the evaporation process. The pups are in their seventh week of development. You can now clearly make out the most advanced sense in the dog's armory, its nose. Inside this puppy's developing nose rests a large bundle of nerve cells called the olfactory bulb. Its job is to process the smell signals picked up by the scent receptor cells within the nose. And there are a vast number of those. Nearly 200 million are already developing. This puppy will detect some organic chemicals at concentrations a hundred times weaker than we can. That means that dogs can identify human scent on a plate of glass that has been touched and then left outdoors for two weeks. That acute sense of smell is vital to the dog from the moment it's born, for when it first emerges from its mother's uterus, it will be blind. To survive, it will need its nose to locate its mother's teats. But this is just the beginning. Throughout its life, the dog's extraordinarily acute sense of smell will help it locate food, recognize mates and offspring, and avoid enemies. Day 53. The fetuses are moving so much that they can be seen on the outside as a rippling movement. Inside, they are now touching. The pups now have a full coat of hair, light cream in colour. The nail and paw pads have developed, with the pads growing a thick, protective, insulating skin layer. The whiskers can now be clearly seen. They will vibrate at the slightest air currents, alerting their owner to the presence, size and shape of nearby objects. They also help to protect the eyes. One touch on the whiskers causes the eyelids to blink. 
They're similar to ordinary hair, but more than twice as thick, with roots set three times deeper. And now the entire body, including the pores, is covered with touch-sensitive nerve endings. There are just two days left. Now the uterus is getting crowded and the fetuses increasingly stressed. As they push against the uterus wall, their supply of oxygen from the placenta becomes restricted. In turn, the lower oxygen level starts to trigger the mother's first contractions. Giving birth or whelping can be over within an hour or may take as long as 36 hours. The dog's temperature drops from 38 degrees to 37 degrees Celsius, the first sign that birth is imminent. The uterine muscles contract in an irregular pattern, relaxing and dilating the uterus, vagina and vulva. This softens, enlarges and lubricates the birth canal to ease the coming delivery. The mother tries to shred her bedding. This may be a hangover from a time when canines would dig a den-like structure. The contractions become more regular. The dog starts to pant and lies down to help her pushing. The fetuses are now turning into a head-first position. Continuing contractions force the pups towards the vagina and dislodge the placenta from the uterine wall. Birth is now imminent. Nine weeks of development in the womb have fully prepared the puppies for this moment, when they must abandon the safety of their mother's womb and face the world for the very first time. Our golden retriever is about to give birth. After 63 days in their mother's uterus, these puppies are ready to enter the world. The mother's first instinct is to tear open the sack and lick the pup clean. This stimulates her pup to breathe. The placenta has one last role to play. The mother eats it and ingests a chemical which stimulates the flow of milk from her nipples. Pups are relatively helpless. All are born blind and unable to walk. Our retriever is now the mother of nine puppies, above average for her breed. Around seven days after birth, the pups' eyes open for the first time, although they stay blind for a further three days. After two weeks, their ear canals open and within another 20 days, their hearing will be far more acute than our own. At 18 days, they'll bark for the first time, and after 28 days, they're walking and running. The females of the litter will be capable of breeding after six months, and the males will be sexually active by the same time. In just 63 days, 
our golden retriever fashioned nine precisely tuned hunters. Intelligent, social, with acute smell and hearing. Even with night vision. In that same time frame, the Asian elephant embryo has grown to five millimeters in length, but it still has a further 20 months to go. At this stage,